here's the deal. Three hours from now, there's gonna be over 20 people here to come to eat and to celebrate. In the meantime, we are finishing this GD pig. Buddy, you nearly lost your basting stick. Our Highland food mission continues in Vietnam's remote northwest. Look around, man. We must be far north. Ooh, this is nice. Last time, Andrew and I nearly got trampled by some buffalo doing battle. Dude, those are some big animals, man. This is two ladies. No, that's two dudes, man. Oh, that's Look two dudes. Fucking penis hanging off it. All right, you're right. Today, our journey comes to an end. Wait, is this a... <gasps> As Andrew and I... Is it? Okay to eat ash. Take the skills we've learned during this trip and apply them to some country cooking. Andrew. Man, what are we doing here? Um, I think we're kind of in the middle of a road. I think we made it. We're here? This is Baka Market. Once a week, wow. everybody comes here. It's a place to be. The mother of all markets. This is the conversion to pretty much every ethnic group in Northwest Vietnam. 18 different tribes Whoa. are represented here. 18? Baka is an intersection of ethnic tribes. The flower Hmong people give this area a unique vibrancy. But you'll also find the Nung people, the Phu La, and the Tay tribe as well. Here's the thing, we've met a lot of different ethnic groups so far, right? but we haven't met the Dai people. We're starting at the market, we're gonna meet a Dai couple right. who has a very unique job. But first, parking. No, no, breakfast. Breakfast. Actually, yeah, parking. I don't, I don't, where can I go? There's no way to drive. Uh, I don't think I was supposed to come in this way. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna leave it here. I don't need it. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Okay. Once a week, folks from various tribes and backgrounds come here to sell what they have or buy what they need. Plants, liquor, produce, live animals as pets, and not. It's also a great time to socialize. But above all, this place is a treasure trove of ethnic foods you can't find anywhere else. Good morning from Vaca Market. To start the day, Andrew and I are getting our own separate breakfast, starting here. Can we see what's inside here? This right here, sold all around this market, is a delicacy in this region. I like this. She's got sticky rice. It's covered with a blanket to keep it all warm and steamy inside. Five color sticky rice. Naturally dyed, naturally delicious. Oh, she, she's gonna, she gonna, you're gonna feed it to me? What we have here is something I have never seen before. From what I understand, this is almost the exact same process behind making a tofu, except instead of using the soybean, they've used the kind of cornmeal to make the tofu. We're gonna jump in and find out what it's like. The corn cake is sliced, then topped with pickled cabbage, ground peanuts, fresh herbs, and pickle juice. Yummo. Now, I was kind of expecting it to be a sweet mixture, but this looks like a savory meal. I've really got no idea what to expect. This is gorgeous. I see blue, purple, yellow, and then here I'm getting some crushed peanuts. Can I get one more of those? I'll pay a little extra if I need to. There you go. What's great about sticky rice is you can just eat it with your hand. It's steamy, but it's not wet. Look, no residue. I want to try one of these pieces of corn tofu. Let's see what this tastes like. Cheers. I don't know what it is, but that is so delicious. The texture of the rice is so chewy. It's just fun to sink your teeth through. I love it. And that is completely flavorless. I don't know that I've ever tried anything else that has as little flavor. Let's mix in some herbs. We've got some of the sawtooth grass, peanuts, some spices on top. Wow. Heaps of flavor, heaps of spices. What's interesting about this is it's cold. That's super weird. In the South and elsewhere in Vietnam, it's pretty much always just rice as a base. But up here, the corn is a real cornerstone of the diet up here. Corn couscous, now corn tofu, and that's super interesting. The food here is diverse and varied, depending on the tribe who prepares it. The Hmong prepare this, a horse organ stew. The Nung people have their pink pho. The Tay people, they're known for this. We got a couple things here. What is this? This one is the sticky rice made out of the powder rice. Inside there, they have the cinnamon seed, peanuts, and sugar in here. We've had pounded rice a couple times on this trip now. Do you think pounded rice was invented uh, in Vietnam or Japan? Sitting across from us, 
a Thai couple. They're the reason we're here. Miss Luwin and her husband, Mr. Kim. Citizen is from Vietnam because from the old generation. We always making in the new year our special occasion. Fantastic. Well, let's try it out. Whoa, I'm not. That's really good. Dude, I was not expecting that flavor. I already love fried pounded rice. But here there's kind of a sweet treat inside. A little bit crunchy from the sesame and peanut. Yeah, peanuts and sugar. If this is Thai breakfast and I was a kid, I would have eaten this all day, every day. Yeah, you'd be 400 pounds. I want to talk about you two. You two have a very unique job. Can you explain what your job is? Uh, I'm Living mostly in the hills of Vietnam's northwestern region, the Tay people have specialized in rice farming and raising cattle. But these two are different. They've made a career out of catering traditional Tay cuisine. Her job is to prepare the food for the wedding or for the restaurant as well. For you guys, what is the biggest wedding you've ever done? We started this trip in a Hmong village, where an unorganized but eager troop of villagers just barely finished a wedding feast in time for the ceremony. With these two, it's a different story. Wow. Wow. So 800 people. 800 people. A lot of Hmong wedding, we also use Vietnamese people cook for us because they made better dish. But for Thai people, it's have to be Thai food. Is it just you two doing that or do you have a team? Also have a team. Composed countryside cooking for your wedding, the new year, or for today's event, a death anniversary. A death day is the anniversary of a loved one. It's the opposite of a birthday. The Tay people take this day to pray for and pay their respects to a dear loved one who's passed away. Well, listen, Andrew, they've actually come here to get ingredients that they're going to need for this feast today. We need to help them. They'll lead the way. You just have to stand next to them and say what's happening. Okay. Preparation for this evening's event are under our way. First, we gotta buy some protein. Wait, is this a, <gasps> this is a pig. Ah! <laughs> How come some of these get a cage and some get a bag? I don't understand. What do you think? Yes? No? Oh, okay, does he understand like a thumb up, thumb down system? He said this one's gonna be yummy. It turns out a lot of people here are used to eating pigs that are a little bit smaller. It costs about $110 roughly. That's it for my shopping list. I'm not sure what Andrew's up to, but pig, Protein, we got it. So I'm here with Chi Luin. I've been tasked with picking up the rest of the ingredients to make a black Thai sticky rice. We're going to cook the rice within this. It's not only going to impart any flavor, but it is going to impart color on the rice. So instead of having white rice, maybe this is what makes it the black sticky rice. Andrew is doing a little bit of shopping, so I'm doing a little bit of self-care. Have you guys ever got a haircut for a dollar? That's a great deal. Don't take off the bandana. That cannot come off. Okay, guys, we're now looking for the rice. Rice. This really fat round rice is gonna make for a really really intensely sticky rice. Great, this is it. Time for a sweet treat. Right here, honeycomb. You know this is fresh because there's still some bees on here. Oh, really? Okay, thank you. That's so delicious. It tastes like honey. If you ever had honey, it's like that, but very, very fresh. And what we have here is a bunch of varieties of beans, and we're here to buy some mung beans. I've seen this yellow mung bean here used in a bunch of different ways, whether it be sweet or savory. I've even seen it used to be ground up into a paste. I think that's what we're gonna be doing here. Right here, these are local roots that can help men with um, little issues that they might have. Can I just eat this? Yeah? Listen, stamina comes at a price. It's not good, it's very bitter. It feels like the plant has bones inside. I don't know if it works if you just eat it directly, but I'm told you buy this, put it in some corn wine or rice wine for three to 12 months, then you drink it and you're unstoppable as a man with another consenting adult. Thai people are the earliest known ethnic group in Vietnam. They're believed to have migrated from the islands of Southeast Asia in 500 BC. They have their own language, wardrobe, and food you've absolutely never seen before. This here is just the start. This is apparently a traditional Thai way of preparing a roasted pig. The piglet is stuffed with indica leaves, seasoned with salt and pepper, then roasted for four hours. I've never seen a pig this tiny yeah. get roasted. You could microwave this pig, it's so small. 
<laughs> you can put it in the toaster oven, like an air fryer. <laughs> I think it would taste better. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe it's like the veal of pigs. This is a part I've not seen before. A stick with a little towel on it, not butter, not oil, water. I think it's a good strategy. We've got to keep the skin moist, make sure it doesn't burn, keep some of the juices inside. You're doing great, by the way. We just have like a, maybe another hour to go. Is your back getting sore? Three hours from now, there's gonna be over 20 people here to come to eat and to celebrate. It's a two pig party, although they're two small pigs. You're gonna help prepare whatever it is you were shopping for. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help with the pig. Okay. Deal? Wait, did you get a haircut? Andrew, there's no time to talk about that. Today, under the guidance of Miss Lewin and her husband, Mr. Keen, everyone is pitching in. The men prepare the meat and the women prepare the sticky rice cakes. One, two, three. I finally found out what's been giving the black color to this rice. Essentially what's happened is we've taken this, which is the wood of the little black tree. They burn it down into a charcoal and then ground it into this black powder. I can't believe we're gonna be eating ash. Okay. <laughs> it tastes like ash. Like ash. That better just be for the color. Huge moment because the pig is finally done rotisserizing. Men, let's get to work. Let's do what guys do. And begin. I need to learn some of these. Step one, we're undoing the stitches, the sutures. I'm not sure why they're opening up the stomach first. Maybe they're pulling out something. Maybe they cooked a chicken on the inside or a quail. I don't think a chicken would fit. Now we're gonna mix it in with the rice, spreading everything around, making sure all of the rice grains are covered. Oh, there's another nail in its butt. So now they can pull out the bamboo and then we have just a pig left. Oh, now we're shaking it. He pulled off the legs and he's taking the head off right now. The skin looks delicious and crispy. You hear that? Oh my God. Oh, we're sort of rubbing it in a little bit to the bottom here. Look to you. Okay, that's it. The smell is delicious. They're taking all these herbs out right now. These are gonna get squeezed out and drained and used as a sauce during the meal. And we're gonna enjoy this very soon. We've got everything we need for the black sticky rice cakes. Time for the build. On top of farinium leaves, add a layer of ash dyed sticky rice, then mung bean, then slices of pork belly, more mung bean, more rice, wrap it up, seal it shut with bamboo strips, and boil for six hours. In the meantime, the piggy we got from the market is being made into several dishes. There's fried pork nuggets, boiled pork, and fried pork shoulder. This looks absolutely delicious. With every cut of the knife, you can hear the skin kind of crackle and break apart. Oh, are you sure? I couldn't. Wow, oh, it doesn't even need seasoning. I'm telling you, a pig comes pre-seasoned. Just heat up and it's ready to go. That's delicious. Finally, braised pork belly. This is the pride of the Tay people. With an elaborate preparation and mesmerizing five-star quality results. First, the meat is blanched, then poked so the skin can better absorb a vinegar-honey mixture. Then it's fried until it's golden perfect. But there's still more to do. It gets boiled, then cut into slices. Season with ground pepper, Thai pepper, ginger, rice wine, Tay fermented soybean, fish sauce, MSG, and seasoning powder. This gets added to a bowl containing pickled cabbage, and the whole thing is braised for two hours. Finally, Flip the bowl to reveal a layer of melted pork skin on top. Serve and eat. Sonic. This is fantastic. And not only did they make all this in just a few hours, they made this too. We got here. I love the shirts the men wear here. I said, can I get one of these tailor-made? They just brought it two hours later. They didn't measure me. No. They just looked at me. Everybody? Angdi! Oh, we're starting with the shot. Yeah? Let's go. All right. <laughs> I feel healthy. <laughs> That's got to be corn. Yeah, now it sounds like DMX. <laughs> hey, corn wine turned me into DMX. <laughs> they have cooked five dishes from that one pig. They also have a pig they rotisserized. Everything looks amazing, man. Of all the dishes here, which one is your favorite? The roasted pig, we helped make that yeah. for at least five minutes, however long that filming was. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should try it out. Oh, and there's skin here. This looks super delicious. Give it a little bit of a dip, Andrew. This is the sauce they squeezed out of the herbs from inside the pig. Cheers. Let's go. 
Oh, it makes me want to sing, but all the songs I want to sing are copyrighted. So I'm just going to sing in my head. That is amazing. we got to start cooking baby pigs more often. That is really good. It is the veal of pigs. This sauce is incredible. It's oily and fatty yeah. from the pig meat itself, but it's just full of fresh, delicious herbs. It's very... Mm. Oh, again? Bro! You want to try some of this? Yes. Andrew kind of helped make this. Ooh. That is like a dense cake. There's mung bean in some of this. There's big pieces of pork fat. How many of these do you eat in a meal? Like just like two slices? She can eat half of them. Ah, really? Mmm. They say the ash is good for your stomach. I'm sorry, the ash? The ash. It's unbelievably dense. It's almost all the same texture. It's pretty hard to distinguish between the rice, the mung bean, and the pork fat, because the pork fat's just melted into muck. I think this is the balance with all this heavy meat. This is the braised pork. It looks like a meatloaf. Have you had that before? No, because we are mung and we don't make that. Well, I think you should consider it. Andrew, let's try this meat. Let's go. In the last two weeks, Andrew and I have lived beside and dined with six of Vietnam's 54 different ethnic groups, tribes whose traditions have been preserved partially due to the isolating nature of these mountains. But I wonder, how much longer can these traditions last? Wow! What just happened? Shut the heck up. That just melts. I've never seen anything like that. One of the best things we ate this trip. So the vegetable base, it's almost like a mix of these deliciously seasoned mashed potatoes with pickled vegetables that have been fried or something. And then on top of the pork belly, it's just tender, it's soft and melts in your mouth. I can't get over the texture. That's like the texture of fish. Like melts in your mouth is an understatement. I've mm. never ever seen anything just fall apart like that. Remarkable. Can you do my wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Entropy is the natural order of things. That which is not tended to tends to break down and fall apart. The same goes for culture and traditions. But here, the Tay people, they put in the work. They're deliberate about maintaining and strengthening the traditions that have brought them this far. She said from the old generation and to now, Thai people just like to hold strong for their uh, culture and they never like to change. So do you think your kids or your kids' kids are going to keep the same traditions just like you and your husband? She was training her kids to keep the culture. I think there's no way to maintain culture Casually, right? It just has to be very deliberate. You right. can see the way everyone's dressed, the food they're eating, the traditions, the language. It's very impressive to me. Uh, mm. I think that is the key to holding on to tradition: is mm. to care and to work at it every day, so it doesn't fade away. And to that, I say cheers. Cheers. <laughs> no, come on. Yeah, come on. From my sleep and look out on the sunshine. I feel. The smile across my face when I look out at the horizon. Being an influencer doesn't require millions of fans. All you need is this t-shirt. Entertain and inspire at your own pace. Don't be an influencer. Be a micro-influencer. Get your shirt now. Andrew, what about you? Do you like to eat ash? I tried it. I hope people think I'm saying ass. <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so we've picked up our... Okay, guys, so... <laughs> Why did he not put any blanket on me? It's a little tragic, a bit dark. There's still some bees wondering what the hell happened to their life. I built my house. Why is it here now? Mm. Oh, God. I'm being forced to drink. Mm. Oh, again? So how often do you think this type of event occurs? Is this once a year? Yeah, for all the significant dead ones in your family, I think. Significant. If you're not that important to the family, you don't <laughs> yeah. get a death party. Like well, uh, your stepbrother? Yeah, uh, maybe. It's not for him. Maybe you get a chicken instead of a whole pig. Is that a good one? <laughs> for men's health? Do you know this? Hmm? <laughs> okay. Ding. <laughs> Ding. I don't think he knows what I'm talking about. Guys, we are buzzed and happy, and I hope you are too. What an amazing adventure it's been. Andrew, my friend, buddy, thank you so much. That was wild, thank you, man. Guys, you can check out Andrew's YouTube channel right here, see his videos and what he is up to right now. Please go subscribe. That is it for this adventure. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A, A piece. piece. Oh, some more corn wine awaits from an old Fanta bottle. I can't wait to drink that up. As long as it comes with some of that pork.